Please, please postpone this thing. Why? Give us a chance. No. I've got to warn the other adults. Your day is past. Give us a year. Give us six months. We take over the world within a week. If you don't like it, you can get off. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Listen, everybody. Listen to me. Theater 5 presents Rebellion Next Week. You're going to find it very hard to believe what I have to tell you. But you've got to listen carefully. It's about little Mary Newhall, a high school student in the town of Tewkesbury. My name is Ethan Miller, and I teach English there. Mary is just a little girl with a C-plus to C-minus average. To give you an idea of what she's like. Gosh, Mr. Miller, you mean in only three weeks we've got to read a whole book and then think about it and then write a book report? Two whole pages. That Golly. is Mary Newhall. You'd never think that every adult in the civilized world is in danger from the activities of that little girl, now would you? Well, listen... That day, when she stopped after class to ask me about the book report. Well, how short can the book be, Mr. Miller? I mean, can I report on The Man Without a Country? Oh, well, uh, that's a short story, Mary. You will report on a, a full-length book. Oh. Well, all right then, Mr. Miller, but golly, all the teachers give us so much work. Uh, oh, Mary. Mary, did you leave this notebook here? Mary! Oh, oh, well. I wasn't sure the notebook I discovered belonged to Mary, so I looked in it. It was filled with names and addresses. Addresses in our country and Canada, and Europe, Asia, and Africa. And that puzzled me, but it was Mary's notebook, all right. There on the front was a sticker saying, I love Paul. And in a teenage scrawl that I recognized, her name. Mary Newhall. I happened to live near the Newhall, so on the way home I took the notebook to her house. Her father told me that she was in her study over the garage out back, so I went out there, climbed the stairs, and... When I got no answer, I tried the door. And then I realized that Mary hadn't heard me because she was in a room beyond the one that I was in. A room with a padlock on the door, but unlocked right now. And as I went toward it, well, I heard course, her Frank, talking. The logistics of the situation will necessitate further delay. Oh, no, Frank. The consensus amongst our enlistees here in America is that the revolution need be postponed only two or three days maximum. The hypothesis on which we intend to proceed... Oh. Hello, Mary. Frank, hold on a moment. There's an adult here. Stay at the phone. I'll call you back. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt your phone conversation, Mary. Oh, golly, Mr. Miller, you made me jump. You left your notebook at school. Gee, where's my notebook? Oh, gosh, thanks a million, Mr. Miller. There certainly are a lot of addresses in that notebook from all over the world, too. Oh, yes, they're, they're pen pals in the Beatles fan club all over the world. Mary. Yes, Mr. Miller? Mary, I heard you talking on that phone. Oh, gosh, that's embarrassing. It was very strange talk for a young girl. You mean all that stuff about revolution and everything? Oh, that was me and my friend Frank. It's a game we play over the telephone. No, Mary. I don't know what was happening when I came in here, but it wasn't a game. I heard words like logistics and hypothesis and oh, others. Oh, gosh, I don't even know what they mean. Frank and me, I mean I, we learned all that stuff out of a book. Oh? And who is Frank? Oh, he's just a boy. You don't know him. He's younger than me. And then I... <laughs> Mary. Yes, Mr. Miller? Why has the dial on that phone got only letters on it? Why hasn't it got any numbers? Oh, well, I... Or <laughs> wires, or any cord. Mr. Miller, you, you caught me. There isn't really any Frank. I, I just pretend over the toy telephone, that's all. Toy... Mary, I could hear Frank's voice, someone's voice, answering you on that phone. Yes, sir. 
Now, I want the truth. About what, Mr. Miller? About you. About Frank and about that telephone. About this revolution you were just talking about. About that notebook, too. It's not just a, a list of pen pals. Now, is it, Mary? You want to know quite a lot. I certainly do. All right. How did that door close? I closed it. But you never moved. You just sat there and it closed behind me and... Let, let me see. What? Oh, it's quite impossible to open it, Mr. Miller, until I release it. Mary Newhall, just what's the meaning of all this? Well, that's what we're going to discuss. Oh, sit down, Mr. Miller. That's better. I assume that sometime while you were being somewhat skimpily educated at the university, Mr. Miller, that you learned something about the evolution of man. Can you be the same child to whom I've been giving C's? Oh, a child to whom you gave C's, Mr. Miller, is a noxious character that I created. A role I played, shall we say, so that I could get through the days and years until the rebellion could be launched. The rebellion. You did learn something about evolution in that rather ridiculous college you went to, didn't you? Yes. Then you know, of course, that our species could not have survived had it not been that we met the needs for survival by developing ever upwards. Now, the Java man, our ancestor, could never have lasted had he stood still. I know all that, Mary. I'm surprised that you do, too, And but... we can't survive. Mankind, the way mankind is right now, can't survive unless we change. But you were talking on the phone about revolution. That's right. Suppose that you, with the brain that you possess, had been born into a society of cavemen... Do you think they would have listened to you? I'm sure I can't tell you, but that's beside the point, Mary. I want to know I'll what... get to everything you want to know. Look at that window. What? what? How did you make that happen? You want to hear some music? We have no phonograph here, have we? And yet... Listen. Good heavens! Now, if you had been born into the age of the caveman, Mr. Miller, you would have been as far in advance of him as I am in advance of you. Do you want to turn the world over to me? Do you want me to govern you? I believe in self-government. Oh, well, that's the answer you would have gotten from the caveman. You would have had to revolt. So my friends and I are going to have to revolt. Your friends? Who? What are your friends? Mutants, Mr. Miller. Occasionally in heredity, there's a sudden variation in the norm. I'm a mutant, and there are several million mutants like me, all of us children, chronologically, but infinitely wiser than you grown-ups. Oh, if we leave the world to you, the world will perish. So we're taking over. Mary, open that door. I want to get out of here. No, Mr. Miller. I'm afraid you're the first victim of our revolution. What are you going to do with me? Well, you'll find out in a minute. All right, never mind me. What are you going to do to the world? You say you're going to take it over. But what are you going to do with it? You may rest assured that we shall not do with it what you grown-ups have done. We shall not dress young men in soldier suits and give them weapons with which to kill each other. We shall not dig shelters in which people may crouch and cower while bombs drop on their cities. We shall not allow some to starve while others grow fat. All the systems that you adults have invented are childish to us. Oh, here's Helen. Why was the door shut, Mary? You knew I was coming. Why did you... Oh, Mr. Miller... Hey, get out of the doorway, Helen. I'm getting out of here. Sorry, Mr. Miller. You're not leaving. Oh, gee whiz, Mr. Miller. I I'm sure glad to see you because I was going to ask Mary about the homework. Do we have to Never do all Never mind, of the... Helen. Well, what do you mean? Apparently, Helen, she means that you are a mutant, too. And you don't pretend any longer. Because I know your secret. That's quite true, Helen. In that case, we'll have to immobilize him, Mary. I know, but how? This, of course, is a test of our principled position. What principled position, for heaven's sake? Mm, I know. Have you talked to Frank about this? Not yet. I'll call him now. Frank? Mary here. No, the adult is still present. 
What's that? Oh, yes, immobilization, of course. The question is, which type of immobilization? Hmm. We can't let him out of this room. Oh, that was Helen, Frank. She's right, of course. If he got out of this room, we wouldn't have any power to... Uh -huh. Freezing, huh? Freezing? You think freezing fits in all right with our principled position? Uh-huh. Huh. It's a rather nice problem, but I think you're right. All right. Bye. We freeze him? We freeze him. And right away, Helen. <laughs> I listened intently to everything that was said during Mary's phone conversation with Frank. These children, far more brilliant than I could ever be, and far more powerful, intended to freeze me. But I didn't panic. I had noted that to call Frank, Mary had simply dialed F. And I'd also noted her saying that if I got out of this room, they would have no more power over me. I determined Mary, to get out as soon sure. as possible. Our principal position commits us to nonviolence. Frank feels that freezing is nonviolent. He may be making a distinction without a difference. But pragmatically, he's right. I wouldn't worry. It may be unpleasant, but it's nonviolent. You see, Mr. Miller, the whole point of our revolution is that we're sickened by the violence you adults have unleashed in the world. So you'll freeze me, whatever that means. But just because there are no ropes or chains, you'll tell yourselves that you're not being violent. Well, I am your victim, and I say it is violent. You have a certain point, but we're in no position to consider it. Oh, let's get on with the freezing. No, no, wait, wait. Well? Well, um, look, this, uh, this has all been a tremendous surprise to me. It's hard for me to take in. You can understand that, I'm sure, but... If you can convince me that you really have learned so much more than grown-ups, it might reconcile me to what you're going to do to me. If I were reconciled, it, it wouldn't really be violent. What do you want us to do? Well, before you came, Mary seemed to pluck music out of the atmosphere. Can you do that, too? Yes, Mr. Miller, I can. It's amazing. And somehow it helps me to understand. Can you do all of the things Mary can do? She just sat there and made that window open without touching it. I can do all of those things. See the window? Thank you! Oh, stop! 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 stop, it. stop it. There was a two-story drop and I was stunned for a moment just lying there. And then I heard those children coming after me. I scrambled to my feet, ran through the backyard, and climbed the fence as I kept going toward the center of town. I was headed toward the police station. I wanted those children, those, those, those monsters, captured and locked up. I was pretty sure they could hurt me only in that room over the garage that I'd just escaped from. I wanted to maneuver them into a trap. And so I thought of an alley between the police station and the East End garage. They followed me as I ran into it and turned to face them. I'm coming. Well, Mr. Miller, do you give up? I should think not. Come and get me. Uh, take him on the right, Mary. I'll take him on the left. Wait a minute, Helen. What can you be thinking of? Put that stick down. Oh, I'm sorry. I've compromised our principles. But the alternative is unthinkable. We can't jeopardize the revolution. We can't let the grown-ups continue their folly. Well, he can't move out of this alley without coming toward us. And if he does, I'll show you how to defeat him. Well, I am coming towards you, and we'll see who defeats whom. All right, Chief, all right. Arrest him. Oh, Chief, I'm so glad you're here. Golly, I don't know what got into Mr. Miller. He went all funny and chased us into this alley. Yes. Oh, gee, I'm awful glad we were near the police station. I was scared to death. Chief, don't listen to these children. Now, what is going on here? Gosh, I don't know, Chief. Mr. Miller started chasing us and yelling things we didn't understand. Oh, now, I can't believe that of Mr. Miller. We couldn't either. We didn't even run at first, did we, Mary? No, but when he started to grab Chief, us... will you please listen to me? Oh, he scares me the way he shouts. Now, now, calm down. I'll listen to you, Ethan. Well, Chief, these children are planning to... 
They're planning to overthrow the government. Now, what kind of talk is that? Look, look, look at that pocketbook there. You see that notebook? Mary, give him your notebook. Well, what about it? Why, it's my pen pal's notebook. Here, you can have it. Look at the names and addresses in that notebook, Chief. She says they're pen pals, but she doesn't write to them. She telephones Oh, them. no, no. Wait a minute, Ethan. Here's one in Tibet. You want me to believe that she telephones him? Oh, look, Chief, believe it or not, these children are engaged in a conspiracy. Oh, gosh, Mr. Miller's flipped his lid. Chief, I've been the school teacher in this town for seven years. Did I ever seem crazy to you before? No. All right, then. Just what am I accused of? Maybe he was molesting us. I read once where a teacher... Shut up! Ran Shut up, you! I... I... I, I, I mean, this, this this is a terrible misunderstanding. Now, now, Chief, I, I claim there's something very, very wrong with these two girls. Maybe my claims seem pretty strange to you. But if these two are innocent, they'd be willing to sit and wait for a while in the station house if you asked them to. Now, wouldn't they? Well, I should certainly hope they'd respect my badge. All right, all right, then. Please, take them to the station house and let me go for half an hour. Well, what for? To gather evidence. To clear my name. <sighs> All right, Ethan, all right. You kids willing to come to the station house with me? Oh, sure. Oh, if you go by my house, Mr. Miller, tell Mama I may be late for supper. <laughs> I hurried back to the room over the garage, and I started searching. I knew I had to produce some evidence, but I couldn't find anything. I remembered what the children had said about the way we grown-ups had made a mess of the world. I, I remembered their policy of non-violence. And then I thought of the, of the world we live in. The dread of the bomb. Poverty. Slums and crime. Suspicion and fear among nations. And suddenly, I knew what I wanted to do. I picked up the phone and I dialed F. Hello, Mary. What happened? This isn't Mary, Frank. This is the adult she told you about. Yes? I want to say to you, Frank, that I understand what you children are trying to do. Go on. And I agree that it is necessary. That makes you somewhat brighter than most of mankind. But I, I want to ask you one thing, Frank. Please. Please postpone your revolution. Why? Give us a chance. I'll go on the other adults. I'll preach to them on the street corners. No. I'll tell them that we've got to be neighbors and, and brothers to each other. Please give us a year. No. Give us six months, then. No. You adults had your chance. Your day has passed. We take over within a week. And there will be no postponement. But I... Please, now listen, listen to me. Come back, Frank. Hello? Hello? Please answer! Please! It was a toy phone again, and there was no other evidence. No other evidence. I went back to the police station, told my story, and Chief Hobbs simply laughed at me. He called the superintendent of schools, and he told me to get out of town. That was yesterday. Last night, the school board met and they fired me. I'm disgraced and out of my job now. But that doesn't matter. Listen to me. Listen to me, everybody. The rebellion is next week. We have less than a week to make this a decent world. Okay, come on, Ethan. Now move along. Listen to me. The rebellion is coming. Come on, Ethan. Listen to me. Theater 5 has presented Rebellion Next Week, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Warren Somerville. Script editor, Jack Wilson. In the cast, Bryna Rayburn, Evelyn Juster, Ivor Francis, and Bob Hastings. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Original music by Alexander Blastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. 
We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, Box 233, New York, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. Thank you.